This is a talk on IQ, image reject, and single sideband mixers. I'm going to assume that everybody that's watching uh, has a basic understanding of mixers, what they do. Um, and if you don't, then I recommend that you read our mix ex Mixer Basics Primer before um, watching the talk. Well, the next slide is, uh, answers the question of uh, why use a uh, IQ IR uh, or a single, single sideband mixer. Um, and the key reason is because you're trying to eliminate filters, as in all of RF design, that you would otherwise have to use. So if you look at a, a normal um, heterodyne transmission, you upconvert some baseband signal, some, some low IF signal, to uh, your RF frequency. You have a, a limited bandwidth channel defined by the FCC or somebody else. And so you use a filter to eliminate your lower sideband. When you pass it through your noisy transmission line, you get to the end. Uh, once again, you have to filter to eliminate the noise that was introduced by uh, usually an ad adjacent channel transmission. Um, this is the most trivial example of, of how you might use a mixer. Uh, and probably none of our customers actually do it, but it's, it's illustrative. Um, if you were to do the same uh, uh, system, using a single sideband and image reject mi mixer. Instead of having that image bandpass filter, the passive circuitry inside of the single sideband mixer cancels out the uh, lower sideband and eliminates the need for that, that filter. With IQ mixers, it's a little bit more complicated. Now, instead of, uh, instead of transmitting uh, only one sideband, you still have to transmit both sidebands using IQ transmission techniques, um, which I'll show why in a minute. Um, but you would transmit two half data bandwidth signals uh, into the same bandwidth channel, uh, and you just use the orthogonality of them to prevent yourself from having to filter out uh, uh, the sideband at the input. And then at the output, you uh, aren't eliminating the you don't have to filter out the adjacent channels uh, because you're only you're using IF filters essentially to eliminate all the adjacent channel transmissions. I spent a lot of time thinking about the physics of how IQ transmission actually works because I found the explanations given in the literature to be overly mathematical. Um, they 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 tend to use complex exp exponentials right off the bat. Um, and so I'm trying to try to come up with a graphic way to think about this. Uh, and so think about it, if, you, if you're trying to transmit a star and a lightning bolt um, using an IQ mixer, uh, at the first step, the, the star and your LO are in phase. And the key point to make here is that the, if your IF and your LO are in phase, as with the star, then the output, both sidebands, will be in phase with each other. If your IF and your LO are out of phase by 90 degrees, then the upper sideband will in inherit a positive phase shift, and the lower sideband will inherit a negative phase shift. That's the essence of the IQ mixer, because that means that when you're transmitting them, uh, the I is in phase with itself, and the Q is out of phase by 180 degrees. So when you get to your receiver IQ mixer, they cancel, the, the I uh, adds in phase again, whereas the Q is 180 out of phase, so it, it doesn't inherit a phase shift, and it cancels it with itself. Uh, on the other hand, because the I is in phase when it arrives, uh, at the Q side, it cancels. It's sort of a hand-wavy explanation of it. If, if you work out the math and then try to draw it, this is, is what it looks like. But the key thing to remember is that uh, the phase adds for the upper lower si the upper sideband and subtracts for the lower sideband. The whole system uh, is based on the concept of vectorial cancellation. The same vectorial cancellation that's at work in the balance in a double balance mixer or a triple balance mixer um, is what allows this this whole system to work. Uh, the benefit is that you can eliminate filtering. The passive com components can be made somewhat small. Um, and most importantly, they can be broadband. So you can't make a, an image reject filter that goes from 2 to 18 gigahertz. Uh, you'd have to go through a switched filter, filter bank. But with an IQ mixer, you can achieve that if you're very careful. 
Uh, the con, one con, it doesn't increase the channel capacity. This is a misconception that at least I held for a long time. I thought an IQ mixer would allow you to transmit more, more data. You're still limited by Shannon's, Shannon's law to whatever the channel capacity is. And the, the next two are kind of related. It doesn't give you as much sideband or spurious rejection as a filter would. You can only get around 20 to 30 dB, limited by the common mode rejection that limits everything that we do. Uh, if you're very good, you can be in this one degree, five, five degrees of phase, one dB of amplitude balance. That means that you're getting in the 20 to 30 dB of rejection across a broad bandwidth. Or you can go into a very narrow bandwidth and get excellent rejection. Um, but the, the, the whole thing depends on maintaining amplitude and phase balance throughout the entire mixer. Uh, so the balance in the, two in the two mixers have to be matched to each other. The diodes have to be matched to each other. Uh, the phase on all the passive components, and most importantly, the phase balance on this, this uh, 90 degree hybrid for the LO. The only thing that, that does not matter is the LO, LO amplitude balance. Because the LO signal is just acting as a switch, the only thing that you care about is the phase of the LO. So if you're trying to build your own IQ mixer out of off-the-shelf components, which I recommend people do sometimes, um, that's the one thing that you can get away with being slack on. Uh, some, a lot of novices and, and scientists uh, use single sideband mixers to try to make, for example, like a broadband synthesizer by using a, a single frequency LO. Uh, this works, uh, but there's always this, there's always this limit to the amount of noise that you will see. Uh, you always see some kind of fuzziness. It's not the, the, the beat signals that you get when you use a normal double balance mixer. And those come from the fact that no matter how good your sideband suppression is, you always have the LO feed through, and it's always at a frequency closer to your uh, actual desired signal than your suppressed sideband is. Even if you could get rid of the LO feed through and the suppressed sideband, you also always have the 2IF by one LO spur. Um, so if you, if you need better than this, then you have to use a filter. You, you, you're wasting your time trying to go through an IQ uh, architecture. Is there a way to improve, because everything uh, hinges on this amplitude and phase balance, is there a way to improve the balance uh, and therefore get better sideband rejection? If you're using a single frequency LO, particularly if you're in the lab and you're only doing it at a single temperature, um, you can get really good amplitude and phase balance by just using a power divider and a, a tunable delay line. Uh, it doesn't work at more than one frequency, but if you're using a fixed LO, it's fine. You can improve. Um, IF phase and amplitude tuning uh, uh, very commonly by using the DAC on your I and Q inputs. Uh, you can go through a training procedure and, and identify at each, each frequency how much you need to shift the phase, how much you need to shift the amplitude on the I and Q. And that actually allows you to uh, compensate somewhat for the Im phase imbalance on the LO quad hybrid. This is limited uh, by the digitiz digitization noise of the DAC on your, your IF uh, to about 10 dB in practical terms. Um, a, another old microwave technique is to put a DC bias on your I and your Q. A lot of people do this when they're building phase modulators. And uh, if, you, if you put a DC offset on your I and Q, you can kind of tune it and you can watch the, the LO and the suppressed sideband go up and down until you've got it you know, set at a nice level. It's an okay thing to do in a lab. If you've got a good uh, LO quad hybrid like we do on the microlithic mixers, then it's not, I, I, don't, I haven't found it to be a very useful technique anymore. You're basically eliminating the isolation inside of the double balanced cores of the mixer. Uh, so it, it has a lot of sacrifices. So I wouldn't recommend that generally. And you can burn out diodes. So if you're trying to build your own uh, quad hybrid, your, your own IQ mixer, uh, what is the best way to create that quadrature signal? It's, it's a really hard thing to do. We spend a lot of time on it. And different uh, applications have different ways of doing it. If you're in the lab, uh, the power divider delay line works OK. If you just need a narrow bandwidth thing and you've got space, you can build a branch line coupler with a, a pretty limited bandwidth. Uh, the polyphase filter uh, quadrature splitter is, it makes the list because it's probably the most ubiquitous quadrature signal generation uh, circuit in existence because it is, you can integrate it into CMOS. Um, 
which means that you can make it very cheap and it shows up in all sorts of communications architectures. This is how you do a, a signal splitting inside of an integrated uh, quadrature IQ modulator. Uh, there's the Lang coupler. You can make this a, a, as an integrated circuit. You can make it as, as a mimic if you use an air bridge. It's broadband. It works for data. Uh, the uh, only downside of it is that it's, it's low power uh, and you have to have these, these wire bonds. And it tends to not be as broadband as a 3dB quadrature hybrid coupler. Uh, and the last, the last digital technique I'll mention is the teeth flip-flop. Digitally produced LOs are awesome. They're almost perfectly in phase. Uh, they can go from DC up to an, an, whatever your process frequency is. And they provide virtually perfect balance. The, the problem is that it lim it's limiting, it's low power. Uh, you have to provide some kind of amplifier if you're going to use it. But I actually think there's a tremendous promise in using these digital phase splitters as LO drivers in next generation broadband uh, test and measurement military grade IQ mixers. And then there's the 3dB quadrature hybrid coupler, which is what we make. It's what we like. Uh, it can handle lots of power. It's very, it's, it has very good balance. Um, it's useful for data. It doesn't limit. Um, it, it's passive. It's the, kind of the gold standard for, uh, for mixers. And that, that's what we put inside of this obviously blurred out mixer that I'm not showing you what's inside of. Um, but the microlithic technology platform that we have developed and patented at Markey allows us to make multi-layer structures that are necessary to create broadband quad hybrids in a small form factor. Uh, and so that's the key to uh, making our, our most recent line of, of mixers that in a small package can have uh, you know, 10 to 1 kind of bandwidths. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over three applications. Uh, first is as phase detectors. Oh, and all, all of these uh, slides are based on blog posts that you can read in much more detail than I'm going into now uh, on our, the blog on our website. Uh, so as a phase detector, an IQ mixer is an excellent choice. And the reason is that when you use a double balance mixer as a phase detector, you have an ambiguity in the power and the phase. So uh, a single DC offset, a single DC voltage can correspond to two different phases in a double balance mixer. But if you have an IQ mixer, by reading the two quadrature components, you can back calculate both what the input power is uh, and what the, the actual phase is. Whereas with a double balance mixer, the, you, you don't know if the input power is changing to, to change your DC voltage. The second uh, application is as a phase modulator. IQ mixers are very popular to use as phase modulators, uh, quadraphase modulators. You can, unlike with a, a double balance mixer where you can only achieve a zero or a 180 degree phase, you can achieve arbitrary phases by using a, a, an IQ mixer. The problem with this is that it exposes a flaw that I mentioned earlier. The LO amplitude doesn't matter. The, amplitude, the LO amplitude doesn't matter if you're using it as a switch. But if you're using the LO as your input signal and then you're trying to modulate the phase on the I and Q ports, then that exposes all of the imperfections in the LO quad hybrid. And you'll see ripples and suckouts in the conversion loss. And uh, it, it generally will not give you anything close to the data sheet performance if you're trying to use it this way. Uh, the last application that I'll talk about is optical transmission. This is something that's picking up uh, a lot of attention recently because uh, a fiber optic cable is sort of the perfect transmission medium for IQ because there's no uh, uh, there's no ambient noise, it's just a adjacent channel noise that needs to be eliminated. And so this is where you actually can get twice the amount of data into a, a, a fiber in the same amount of bandwidth by doing quadrature microwave modulation and then you can do quadrature optical modulation and that's the backbone of, of some of the architectures that people are proposing for uh, modern 100 gigabit ethernet systems. So that's all of my slides and applications. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, I can answer them now, or uh, I can talk to you back at our, our booth 2896, I think. Thanks.